Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to make an automatic glowing nightlight. Once we turn the light off, the nightlight turns on automatically with a nice glowing effect. For those of you who want to make an arts and craft gift for somebody like a photo frame or a wooden box, this is a really good way to add a beautiful enhancement to your gift. In this example, we simply place the light in the cup and drew some shapes on it. It already looks pretty amazing. Anyway, let's get started. This is the overall schematic for our circuit. If you aren't interested in the details and are more interested in the end result, don't worry about it and just skip this part. We've already made all the calculations for you to make this thing work. Anyway, so we can break this circuit down into three parts. The first part is the light detection circuit. The middle part controls the on and off effect of the light and the third part gives the LED the nice glowing effect. In the light detection circuit, we have a photoresistor on top and a 1 mega ohm resistor in the bottom. The output of the voltage divider is connected to the MOSFET transistor. A MOSFET transistor is like a switch activated by voltage. When the photoresistor sees light, the gate voltage will go high and the switch activates, connecting the drain to ground. This will pull the reset pin on the 555 timer low and deactivate the 555 timer. As soon as the room gets dark, the resistance of the photoresistor goes high and the voltage at the gate drops below 0.8 volts, which is the minimum voltage needed to turn the transistor on. Once the transistor turns off, the drain will no longer be connected to ground but instead connected to 5 volts through the 1 mega ohm resistor and activate the 555 timer. In the middle part, we have the 555 timer in a stable mode. How it works is that pin 2 and pin 6 constantly monitors the voltage of the capacitor. If the voltage drops below one third of the input, the voltage at pin 3 will go high and start to charge the capacitor through this 47 kilo ohm resistor. Once the capacitor voltage goes above two thirds of the input voltage, pin 6 will detect that and turn the output at pin 3 back to low. The capacitor will then begin to discharge through the 47 kilo ohm resistor, and the voltage will go back down, and the cycle just repeats. The third part controls the glowing effect of the LED. Since the capacitor discharges slowly through the 47 kilo ohm resistor, we can take advantage of that and use it to control the brightness of the LED. Remember the transistor acts as a switch? Well, it's also a switch that can control the amount of current that flows through it. So as the voltage of the gate slowly increases, the brightness of the LED is slowly amplified. As the voltage of the gate decreases, the brightness of the LED diminishes because of the less current flow. Now let's move on to the assembly of the circuit. Okay, so here are the components that we need. A 5 volt power supply with a 2.1 millimeter jack, some jumper wires, a 10 millimeter LED, two BS170 N-type MOSFET transistors, a photoresistor, one 1 kilo ohm resistor, two 1 mega ohm resistors, 147 kilo ohm resistor and one 100 ohm resistor. One 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and a 555 timer. Please come check out the written guide at electronicninjas.com if you need help getting these parts. Okay, so we first start by building the light detection circuit. This is the MOSFET transistor BS170. From the flat side, the top pin is the drain, the middle pin is the gate, and the bottom pin is the source. Let's put that on the breadboard. Next, we take our photoresistor and connect it from 5 volt to the gate, which is the middle pin of the transistor. Next, we take the 1 mega ohm resistor and connect it from gate to ground. Take another 1 mega ohm resistor and connect it from 5 volt to the drain. Finish up by connecting the source to ground. The order of what you connect doesn't really matter. Okay. 
Take the 5 5 timer and place it on the breadboard. First connect the power to the 5 5 timer by connecting 5 volt to pin 8 and ground to pin 1. Next, connect pin 2 and pin 6 together like in the schematic. Take the 47 kilo ohm resistor and connect it from pin 2 to pin 3. You can also connect it from pin 3 to pin 6. It's the same thing since pin 2 or 6 are connected together anyway. Now we're going to connect the capacitor. These kind of capacitors have polarity, meaning that one side is positive and the other side is negative. You can also see the indication of the negative side on the capacitor itself. Take the capacitor and connect the positive side to pin 2 and the negative side to ground. Let's move on to the LED fading part. Take another transistor and place it on the breadboard. We're now going to connect the LED, but we first need to connect the resistor to limit the current through the LED. The resistance needed depends on your LED. If you have an LED and are not sure what resistance you need, you can find a calculator online or comment below and we'll be able to help you out. For this LED, we are using a 100 ohm resistor. First, connect that to 5 volt. Next, connect the positive side of the LED to the resistor and the negative side to the drain of the transistor. Like the capacitor, the longer side is the positive. Then we connect the source to ground. The LED will turn on falsely because the gate isn't connected yet. We take a 1 kilo ohm resistor and connect the gate of the transistor to pin 6, which is connected to the capacitor. Now you can see that the LED starts to glow. But wait, the room is lit and the LED is still on. Isn't it supposed to be automatic? You're correct. Remember the light detection circuit? We now connect the drain of that transistor to pin number 4. Now you can see the LED turns off because the room isn't dark. Now that everything's connected, let's go test it out. Here we have our circuit. If I turn off the lights, the LED will begin to fade in and out. So after testing it on the breadboard, we soldered everything together on the protoboard. And now we're going to make it a little bit more secure by adding some hot glue on the bottom. Come check out the written version of this tutorial at electronicninjas.com. There you can find more details about the project, such as changing the glowing timing of the LED or information about the components used. If you have an idea and need help making it, please feel free to comment below and we will come up with a tutorial for it soon. See you next time. Thanks.